presenting the Bullwinkle Philharmonic. Hoppity Hooper was a little-known, low-budget animated cartoon series from the mid-60s. It ran from September 26, 1964 to September 2, 1967. Unlike classic Warner Brother, Disney, and Hanna-Barbera cartoons, Hoppity Hooper has not fared well in this digital age. In a customary format of short quips mixed with random and interesting historical facts, I'd like to celebrate Hooper for the joy that it has brought me. As with all good stories, ours starts in a cracker barrel on a movie rack. Among the arrays of random adult movies was a container boasting 600 classic cartoons, for the same price, $14.99. On it were 50 low-quality episodes clearly taped instead of digitally transferred. I was immediately infatuated and enthused by this prospect of a historical recollection, a compilation of effort not explored in our current day. Among Boop, Woody Wood, Classic Popeye, the scariest clay man ever to exist, Gumby, and Tom and Jerry was Hoppity Hooper. Also, there was like Frady Cat, a bunch of other random stuff. I don't know, some of it was good, some of it was bad, and some of it was just a testament to the ingenuity of those early pioneers of the, the medium of animated content. The point is, bootleg or not, I was hooked. Periodically, I would watch and rewatch several episodes to much enjoyment. But why? Why did I enjoy a terrible looking cartoon series from the 1960s? Please help me, I don't know, I need help. To answer this question, we'll have to look to the past, and the present, and the future. Currently, it is speculated that the ownership of the Hoppity Hooper property may be through Classic Media Limited, commonly known as DreamWorks Classics, which definitely owns Rocky and Bullwinkle, as well as various other J. Ward's productions. Uh, to speed through the little surviving history of Hoppity Hooper, J. Ward and hired writers came up with Hooper in 1960 during a brainstorming session, and after putting together several pilot episodes, he stayed dormant in their subconscious for years until they decided that Rocky and Bullwinkle were getting a little bit old in 1964, and wanted to try something new. Things barely went anywhere at first, with the titular Fillmore, Fillmore Bear, to be voiced by Alan Reed, sign off to Hanna-Barbera's Fred Flintstone. Everything did end up coming together, though. Later that year, the project was picked up by ABC and NBC, running from Saturday at 12.30 p.m. to 1 p.m., from its production in 1964 to October 2nd, 1965, and 1 to 1.30 p.m. from 1965 to its removal from the air, and all the while sponsored by General Mills. Despite J. Ward's production's emphasis on separating Rocky and Bullwinkle from Hoppity Hooper, Hoppity was much like Rocky and Bullwinkle, with a dim-witted bear and a quick frog pairing, paralleling the previous moose and squirrel, while introducing a radical new element in the form of a bent-nosed conman fox, Waldo Wigglesworth, voiced by Hans Conrad, in trance with get-rich-quick schemes. Also returning in these cartoons were pun-filled title screens, as well as pun-filled closing screens, accompanied by fourth-wall-breaking narration, originally conducted by Paul Fries and ending with William Conrad. Hey, God, that's positively supernatural. It's uncanny. And spooky, too. Well, what in the world is the terrible secret of Ring-a-Ding Spring? Be back next time to meet Hoppity Hooper starring in The Thing in the Spring. In order to portray my undying dedication to this medium, I will use a format of expression wholly underused in the industry of YouTube. Reaction. Let's start with the pilot episode, where Jay Ward, Bill Scott, Skip Craig, and a whole host of unattributed Mexican animators phase us into a car chase, and the con man Waldo Wigglesworth, as well as his partner in crime, Fillmore, Fillmore Bear, drive their illegal substance van through the countryside. That is, we'll do that if I end up caring enough to make a second video in this series, because this is the end. Goodbye. Well, all is well and ends well, Uncle Waldo. Hey, don't you have one too many wells in there? What next? Well, I thought we might go into business in a small way, with just a pea and three walnut shells. Now, you just keep your eye on the little pea, young man. Well, our friends are off on a brand new story. Be sure you see the beginning of it next time in the adventures of Hoppity Hooper. <laughs>